had the opportunity to spend a couple of days up in Cumbria in England in a little little teeny uh, closed community called Lyonfield. I'm, a, I'm an early riser and I get up in the morning and I go, you know, I'll pray and I'll read my Bible. I read my Bible on the computer. And, and I went this morning, I got up early and it begun to get light. It was summer in England. It gets light or it stays light. It stays light very late. Uh, but I went out and there was something wrong. I tried to get on the internet and I wasn't getting on the internet. So I thought perhaps something was wrong with my computer. I rebooted the computer. I did all this. And then I looked down and I realized that it had no power. So I thought maybe something wrong with my computer there. I checked. I went over and turned the light, no lights. Now we were staying in a house that I was not familiar with, but I went and I located the circuit breaker box, checked all the circuit breakers, and they all seemed okay. So I went outside and went around to the main power block on this building, on the house, and saw that everything was all right there. Now in the meantime, I began to notice that there were other people coming out of their homes and kind of wandering around doing the same thing that I was doing. And the fact was, it was obvious at that point that the power was out throughout this entire little community. Now being a remote community in the Lake District of England, um, we didn't have any communication with the power. I wasn't quite sure whether the power had just gone out in that community, in that entire village, the entire county. Maybe it went out in all of England for all I knew. For all I knew, power had gone out throughout the entire world. But I saw all these people, and they were walking around confused because there was no power. And immediately it struck me, this is like the church, where there is no power. There's confusion. Because you see, the Holy Spirit was sent to lead us into all truth. If you don't have that connection, you don't know the truth. You don't have understanding of what's going on. Okay? God is not a God of confusion, but of peace. That's what it says in 1 Corinthians 14. I lacked understanding because the power was out. And God spoke to me so powerfully through this. All right, that, that when the power is out, we walk in utter confusion. Well, the power that God is calling us to is that power of the Holy Spirit. If you have the Holy Spirit, and by the way, if you have accepted Jesus as your Lord and Savior, you have the Holy Spirit. More than just saying that tritely, you have the Holy Spirit. I want you to know that you are the temple of the Holy Spirit. But somehow, it is possible, it's like light bulbs. Now you see light bulbs here. Well, they're connected to the power. They don't you know they're well designed. They're made with a purpose. But if I go over and turn the switch off, they're still the same light bulbs. They were still made for the same purpose. But they'll give off no light. Because the connection has been broken between the bulb and the power. There are a lot of Christians who have the Holy Spirit. But it's like the switch has been drawn. And the power is off. How do you do that? How does that happen in our lives? Well, you know, very simply, that's a command that God spoke to the Apostle Paul in 1 Thessalonians. In 1 Thessalonians chapter 5, verse 19, he says, don't quench the Holy Spirit. And literally, that word quench in the Greek is like extinguish, put out the fire. So it's possible. We wouldn't be instructed not to do it. We're not possible to do it. So, you know, how do we get to this place where we are saved? Our names are written in the Lamb's Book of Life. We are the children of God, and the Spirit of God bears witness with us, and yet we're not walking in the power. Well, God doesn't, it says we've been given everything pertaining to life and godliness in God's Word. So the simple fact of the matter is, there's got to be an answer. There's got to be instruction. Remember what we were last week, we were talking about right here in this chapter, for whatever was written in earlier times was written for our instruction. So if you look in 1 Thessalonians chapter 5, you'll see these verses. And I'm going to read from verse 15 through, back through 19. See that no one repays another with evil for evil, but always seek after that which is good for one another and for all people. Rejoice always. Pray without ceasing. In everything give thanks, 
But this is God's will for you in Christ Jesus. Do not quench the Spirit. You see, I believe these are the things that do quench the Spirit. And it starts with, isn't that what our study for the last few weeks has been about? Our relationships with other people, right? In, in 14, you know, bear with the one who's weak in faith. In 15, you know, we're supposed to help that one who's weak in faith. Are we our brother's keepers? Are we, you know, this is all about our relationships with others. Why is that so important? How can that quench the Holy Spirit? Because God will shut you down if you don't do this. Jesus Christ said, he told the parable, he said, here's the way it works. What you've done for the least of my brothers, you have done unto me. What you have not done to them, you have not done for me. Our relationship with other brothers and sisters reflects our relationship with God Almighty. And if you don't have a right relationship with the Father through Jesus Christ, powered by the Holy Spirit, you will not have a right relationship with other people. You'll be first. You'll always be first in your own life. You'll never have that ability to have that servant heart, to have that same mind as Jesus Christ, to put on that humility and serve others because you're putting their well-being in front of others. You don't, that's why Jesus said in the Sermon on the Mount, he said, if you're going to, to the altar to make your offering, and you recognize that you have something wrong with another brother, go take care of that before you come to the altar. Your relationship with other brothers and sisters will absolutely either encourage and build your relationship with God, or it will hinder your relationship with God. And you've got to decide which one it's going to be. You can quench the Holy Spirit by not having a right relationship with, with others. And that relationship is to love them as Christ loved you. God's love above the heavens. God's love deeper than the sea. Watching over you